Today, we are going to be chatting about how to get started in cryptocurrency for beginners. So I'm just going to take you through a few different ways that you can start this. But first, I'm going to read you what cryptocurrency is since you are a beginner and you need to understand what you're potentially putting your money into. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just some guy giving my opinions. My goal is for everybody to be the master of their own lives and make their own financial decisions. I'm gonna just run you through when I started buying cryptocurrency, exactly what I did. And this was over six years ago. So I've been in this space for a while. Cryptocurrency is a digital asset designed to work as a medium of exchange where an individual coin ownership records are stored in a ledger existing in a form of computerized database using strong cryptography to secure transaction records, to control the creation of additional coins, and to verify the transfer of coin ownership. It typically does not exist in physical form like paper money and is typically not issued by a central authority. Cryptocurrencies typically use decentralized control as opposed to centralized digital currency and central banking system. This is important though, the history of cryptocurrency. In 1983, the American cryptographer David Chalm conceived an anonymous cryptographic electronic money called eCash in 1983. So this isn't actually really new technology. Like it's kind of old, but to be used in the public space like this, that's what is big. So later in 1995, David implemented it through DigiCash, an early form of cryptographic electronic payment which required user software in order to withdraw notes from a bank and designate specific encrypted keys before it could be sent to a recipient. This allowed the digital currency to be untraceable by the issuing bank, the government, or any third party. You might be asking next, well, what's Bitcoin? What's the difference between Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? Bitcoin is just one cryptocurrency, but it's arguably the biggest cryptocurrency. It's the mothership of cryptocurrency. Where Bitcoin goes, everything else goes. That's still how it is. So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency invented in 2008 by an unknown person or group of people using the name Satoshi Nakamoto and started in 2009 when its implementation was released as open source software. It is a decentralized digital currency without a central bank or a single administrator that can be sent from user to user on the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network without the need for intermediaries. Transactions are verified by network nodes through cryptography and recorded in a public, public distributed ledger called a blockchain. Bitcoins are created as a reward for a process known as mining. They can be exchanged for other cryptocurrencies, products, and services. That's pretty awesome. And if you want to learn more about this, you can watch an epic documentary. It's one of my favorite cryptocurrency documentaries. It's called Banking on Bitcoin. Banking on Bitcoin. And that will take you through the history of Bitcoin and what they've had to go through through all these years to get to the point that we are in right now. The question you're having right now, you have all these dollars and you want to buy Bitcoin, you want to buy uh, Ethereum or XRP or Chainlink or Stellar or whatever. How? How do you go from I have a hundred dollars to, I want cryptocurrency. Simple. I'm going to give you the easiest way to do it because this is the way I started. I started on a platform called Coinbase. Now Coinbase is arguably the biggest exchange in the United States for cryptocurrency. It's where I got started in January, 2014, I believe is when I had my first Bitcoin transaction on Coinbase. Prior to that, I knew about Bitcoin for years before, but it was so complicated to get in that I was just like, nah, nah, nah. In retrospect, I would have definitely figured it out, but now that's why I don't make any excuses. That's why you shouldn't make any excuses. And that's why I keep repeating, this is the best investment opportunity of our generation. 
This is the best performing asset of the last 10 years. Realize that. The best performing asset. Just think about that. So you just go on Coinbase.com, okay? Coinbase.com, Coinbase.com. And then all you have to do on the upper right-hand corner, I'm gonna pull up this screen right here for you. Get started. First name, last name, email, choose a password, the state you live in, and I certify that I'm 18 years or older. And then you have a Coinbase account. Then when you go on Coinbase, you need to connect your bank account into Coinbase. So that is going to be the big part of this is just connecting your bank account and then getting approved. And that should take anywhere from a few days to a week. Took me a minute because I did mine years ago, but I'm pretty sure they go way faster these days. Then boom, okay, now your Chase account or your Bank of America account or whatever bank that you use is integrated into Coinbase. Now you see your bank account in there and you can start buying. Like, okay, I have Bitcoin right here, Bitcoin's right here, and then you just, it's buy. Like, you see it right here, you just type in the number, I'm not signed in right now, but you type in the number over there, then it will literally tell you how many Bitcoin that you, that you have. So you can type in $100 and then it'll convert that to Bitcoin. This is the biggest misconception that I keep hearing. This is not the stock market. You do not need to buy one share of Bitcoin. You can buy 0 0.0001 Bitcoin. You can spend $20 on Bitcoin. You do not have to spend a Bitcoin is $11,320 right now. You don't have to put in a single order of $11,320. So I'll hear people say, oh, I would love to go into Bitcoin. I just don't have enough money. You don't have a dollar? That right there is the biggest concern that I hear about this. But once that concern is broken down, then what's the excuse? You can't put in five bucks? I mean, that's how I was doing it. When I first started, I was like, well, I guess I got 20, $25 extra. I'm gonna buy some Bitcoin. I'm not gonna eat a meal tonight. I'm gonna buy some Bitcoin. I'm not gonna go out with my friends tonight. I'm gonna buy some Bitcoin. So you just have to decide how you want your future to look. And me putting those small amounts of money in over those years when I was super broke made it so that over these last few years when I actually needed money, I had it. I had something. The reason that I say use Coinbase is because from my experience, it's just super easy to use. It's super simplified. You know, there are other great exchanges here. We have like Binance, Gemini, you know, but at the end of the day, like I said, I started with Coinbase. Coinbase has some issues, but if you're not doing trades regularly and you're just a long time investor, it's a great place to be. First, just make the buys happen, start getting your money up, but then, you know, look into a ledger and learn about how to transition your money from the exchanges off offline, essentially. So getting your money offline and with you is the safest thing you can do. So if Coinbase gets hacked, I'm not gonna have to worry about that because I'll have my cryptocurrency on a little USB drive or an offline computer or even a piece of paper. Even you could remember the code in your head if you want. I don't recommend that because you're not gonna remember that long code. But it's possible some people do it. Actually, let's look at this real quick on Coinbase. So you can see the ones that say trade next to them, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink, Litecoin, Tezos, EOS, Stellar Lumens, not Monero, I wish. Come on, Coinbase, get Monero on Coinbase. Uh, USD Coin, Cosmos, Dash, I love Dash, Ethereum, Classic, Zcash, Maker, Compound. Like, look, look at all these basic attention token, love it. So everyone that you see has a trade next to it are ones that you can buy on Coinbase. You can't buy every cryptocurrency on Coinbase. So that is 
the issue that you will hit is that if you want to get some random small cryptocurrency, it's probably not going to be on Coinbase. So you have to go to some other exchange. Uh, I just, you know, that's why I use different exchanges because I don't just want uh, what's on Coinbase. So if I want to go buy Cardano, for example, then that's going to be a problem because that's not on Coinbase. Hopefully it will be on Coinbase in the future, but it's not right now. So to finish this off, if you're a beginner, do what even a lot of the veterans don't do. Study history and study economics. By doing this, you'll get a proper gauge of how markets work, how history works, how money works, what money even is. I have two recommendations for you to read. They're very long books. One is by Murray Rothbard. It's called Man, Economy, and State. The other is by Ludwig von Mises. It's called Human Action. Now these are both economics books. And if you just read those two, you will have a better understanding of decentralized markets more than some of the most seasoned veterans in these spaces. Because I got into Bitcoin for philosophical reasons, because of decentralization. So you need to realize when you're putting your money into cryptocurrency, you're investing in technologies, you're investing in the future, you're investing in what I call the best investment opportunity of our generation. Go learn the Austrian school of economics. Go learn the philosophy of agorism. Go learn about market history and the history of money and how governments have interacted with money throughout history. Because if you do this in the very beginning, you will have a one-up on super, super experienced people. Because a lot of the experienced people in this market are not doing this from a huge overarching philosophical standpoint. And I am, and I believe that that's what helps me make the best decisions with my cryptocurrency investments.